Is there anyone who would like to come oh, up for a story this morning? You're also awake. This is amazing. story for you this morning. This, I'm not even going to have you guess, I'm just going to tell you, this is an old story. 2,000 years old at least. And it's a story that Jesus told to people. So it's not a story about Jesus this morning, it's a story that he told to people. And we're not sure where he heard it from, and we don't know how many times he told it, but it, it got written up in the Bible, so it must have been told a few times. Quite a few, probably. So let's, let's hear this story. And this story begins on a farm. On a farm, where they were growing all different kinds of things. And this is the farmhouse. And this is a story about a father who owned this farm and the, this father worked very, very hard and his farm was um, a really good farm and so he ended up making a lot of money. He had a lot of money. He was a rich farmer, which is not very typical, but he was a very rich farmer. And he had two sons. He had an older son, and the older son did what he was told. He worked with his father in the fields, and he never did anything uh, that he wasn't supposed to. He was considered the good son. But the father also had another son, a younger son, and he was kind of lazy. He didn't like to work on the farm. He didn't like to do what he was told. And he didn't even want to be there. He wanted to be anywhere else. And so one day, the younger son went to his father and he said, I want you to give me my inheritance now. Now, inheritance is a big word. Do you know what it means? Have you heard that word before, Kathy? Yeah, I know it's, it's, a, it's a tough word. Um, basically, what it means is that uh, often when someone, when someone dies, whatever is left of their money is given to the children. And that's called an inheritance. But the son wants it now. He wants his money now. So that was a bit strange. But the father decides to give it to him. And so... He took his, all his money and he split it in two and he gave half of it to the younger son and half of it to the older son. Well, now that he had money, he could get away. So he decided he wasn't just going to leave the farm. He was going to leave the country that he lived in and go to a more interesting, more exciting country. And so he packed up all of his things and he went to this new country with all of his money. And the, the first thing he did, that's a lot of money. The first thing he did was he got himself a really nice apartment. And that took some of his money. And then he decided he needed some more interesting clothes than farm clothes. So he went out and bought himself a really nice jacket. And that took more of his money. And then he decided he could buy himself whatever he wanted. So he went out and bought all kinds of gifts for himself. Uh, all for himself. And that took more of his money. Well, now that he had nice clothes and a nice apartment and all these 
uh, some, these nice furnishings and everything, he decided he would have parties. And so he invited all the rich people in this country to his house every day for parties. And he would supply all the food and all of the drink, and it took more and more of his money. <coughs> and eventually, all the money that he had ran out. He was down to just one coin left. And what happened is his friends stopped coming over because he couldn't feed them, he couldn't entertain them. And then he had to sell all of his uh, gifts and possessions back because he couldn't afford them either. And he had to sell his fancy clothes because he couldn't afford them either. And one day, he couldn't pay for his house, and he lost that too. And he ended up on the street with virtually nothing left. And then, if, if things weren't bad enough, there was a famine in this land. Do you know what a famine is? That's another funny word, isn't it? No food, nothing would grow. The rain didn't come, the crops didn't grow, and there was no food. And the little bit of food that was in the country went to the people who could pay for it. And he was able to buy one last loaf of bread, and then he was out of luck. And he was on the street without a house, without any decent clothes, and no money. And he got hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. So hungry that he thought, I have to find, I have to find some kind of work to make some money. And so he went to this man. And this man raised pigs. And so he asked that man if he could have a job, because he knew that he, he had some money. And the guy said to him, well, yeah, you can have a job, but you have to work with the pigs. Well, what you don't know is that in this country, pigs were considered a bad animal that you never touched, and you never ate pork from a pig. That was against the law. And so here he was, having to look after the pigs. He had gone as low as he could go. And he was starving because there was nothing to eat, because all there was in this farm was pig meat to eat, and he couldn't eat it. Pork, like pork chops? Have you ever had a pork chop? No. And finally he decided the only thing he could do was go home. But he couldn't go home as a son. What he would do is he'd go home and beg his father to hire him as one of the helpers on the farm so that he could pay back to his father all the money that he lost. So he made the long trip home. And when he got near, his father saw him and came running out from the farm and threw his arms around him and kissed him and welcomed him back. And the son couldn't believe it because he thought, if anything, he'd get a whipping, but he certainly wouldn't get a hug and a kiss. And he said to his father, I'm not worthy anymore to be your son, but if you'll hire me, I'll work here and pay back all that I, I've lost. Well, when the father heard how sad his son was, he said, no, you are my son, and we're going to have the biggest party ever to celebrate your return. And so he sent the servants to go and bring out the finest robe, and they put he put the finest robe that he had on him. And then 
he brought out sandals, and he had the servants put sandals on his feet. It's a shoe. A sandal is a shoe. Well, it's actually plasticine, but it's sandals today. You have to imagine that. And so, this was going really well, except the older brother, who had been out working in the field all day, who had never done anything to disobey, had never done anything except look after his father and look after the farm, hears this celebration, and, he's, and he says to one of the servants, what's going on? And so they tell him that his brother has come back. And instead of being happy, he gets really mad. He gets really mad and he refuses to come in. He goes back out into the field because he doesn't feel his brother deserves anything except a good kick. That's what he thought. And the father, hearing this, runs out to the field and begs his older son to come and join them. And the elder son says to him, this is completely unfair. I have been here all the time. I've never done anything wrong. And he's the one that gets the feast. It's just not fair. And the father says to him, everything I have, I have already given to you, and that will never be taken away. We have to celebrate because your brother who was lost, has come home. I wonder why the older brother was so angry. Because he wanted the good stuff. Not his, not his brother had the bad stuff. Catherine? Completely unfair, isn't it? Kendall? <laughs> you think about it. I have another one. Oops. He fell over. That's all right, he can sleep. I wonder why the father I wonder why the father welcomed the young son home. I wonder why he did that. Megan? Because he missed him? I wonder, I wonder if the older brother joined the, the party. What do you think, Sam? Do you think he joined the party? No. So he, he might have he might have joined the party uh, because he might have been worried about his brother too. Well, you know, we don't know because the story ends before we even know that. So that's our story, and we're going to sing a song about this story, which is number one twelve in Voices United, and.